Uh, hello everyone. So this is group one. Our timeline is 1850 to 1900. Um, and we are a group of four people, including Pranjal, Jarmi, Surbi, and Taya. Uh, let's start the presentation. Here we'll be talking about art, architecture, industrial design, and graphics, uh, starting from 1850 to 1900s. Uh, I'll, uh, I'm Pranjal. I'll mostly talk about uh, the art and architecture starting from 1850 to 1875. Uh, I'll start uh, with real, uh, realism. Realism uh, was uh, begin earlier in 1830s, but reached prominence at, uh, and held sway from the end of Civil War to around the 19th century. The main character, uh, the ma main artists were Millet and Corbett. Um, so now, as you can see, this is the Crystal Palace Hyde Park from London. Uh, it served uh, as the venue for 1851 Great Exhibition, which drew more than 14,000 uh, visitors from around the globe. The next is uh, this photograph uh, called Dead Confederate, Confederate Soldier with Gun. Uh, one of the most well-known American photographers of the 19th century, Matthew Bodhi, is regarded as the father of photojournalism. Photography took a peak uh, during this duration. Uh, photography developed in the uh, middle of 19th century. Uh, changes in painting took place because of that. Photojournalism started to take highlights in social problems. Uh, next here we see La Lady Lilith, a painting. English poet, uh, painter, and illustrator Dante Gabriel Rossetti created this work, The pre raphaelite Brotherhood, was founded by him. Uh, next, we'll talk about Impressionism. Uh, this is one of the paintings called Sunrise. The masterpiece by Claude Monet uh, gave rise to the artistic Monet of Impressionism. Monet was the most consistent and prolific uh, practitioner. Uh, so now coming next uh, to 1874, um, we'll talk about Impressionists. Uh, main artists were Monet, Claude, D Digas, and more. Characteristics of this mo movement embrace modern life, incorporate new technology and ideas of the time, rejected the established uh, style of the academy. Uh, the art emphasizes the light effect uh, of modern subject matter. Uh, now I pass on to Surbhi. Um, hello, I'll be talking about art and architecture from 1875. So we're starting with Le Monlin de la Dolit, as the name suggests, it's uh, a name of the painting from a French artist known, known as Pierre Auguste Renoir. And it's one of the Impressionism's most celebrated masterpiece. So in the late 19th century, it was customary for working class partisans to dress up and spend Sunday afternoons eating galettes, cakes, drinking and dancing. Renoir paintings is realistic depiction of the typical French lifestyle in late 18, 18th century. So this is oil on medium. Let's move on to the next slide. Um, let's talk about post-impressionism. The main artists of this style were Paul Gollin, George Sioret, Vincent Van Gogh, and Paul Cézanne. Characteristics of this movement were breaking up free forms into naturalism, expressing emotions and symbolism. Tragic Overture. Jonas Brahms composed the concert overtune, Tragic Overtune for orchestra in 1880. In order to emphasize the suffering for the characteristics in the work, Brahms designated it as tragic. Brahms, however, was more concerned with evoking an emotional response from the listener rather than the musical storytelling. Let's move on to the next slide. Statue of Liberty. So the French sculptor Frederick Auguste Bartholdi created the Statue of Liberty in 1881. It was a gift from the French people towards the United States. It is a symbol of freedom in America and sends out a warm welcome to the newcomers from other countries. La Saga de Familia. Large Roman Catholic church called La Sagarte Familia was built by architect Antioni Gaudi in Barcelona, Spain. Construction started in 1882, but Gaudi took over 
a year later and injected his design aesthetic, a fusion of curvicular art Norway forms and Gothic architecture onto the building. Up until his passing in 18, 1926, Gaudi devoted his entire life to the endeavor. Since then, the building was moved slowly and by 2010, it was the only reached halfway. 2026, the centennial of Gaudi passing is the anticipated completion date. A Sunday afternoon on island of La Garteja. One of the George Suarez's most recognizable and well-known works is A Sunday Afternoon on the Island of La Garde Jate. It is a prime example of pointillism and a style that depends. Okay, let's move on to New Impressionism. Main artists Paul Signick, George Suarez, and Maxim Lys, Henry and Edward Kors. It was renowned for its random spontaneously of Impressionism favored more measured techniques. The famous painting Starry Night, one of the most well works of the art in the entire world. Vincent van Gogh, The Starry Night. Eiffel Tower for the Paris World Exhibition in 1889. French organizer and engineer Gustave Eiffel built the first, not the first, the only Eiffel Tower. The Scream, it's a well known painting. And the Scream is a composition by expressionist artist Edward Munch that has four iterations. Let's talk about industrial design. Uh, we are back to the great exhibition, uh, which uh, hosted a large industrial works fair where different countries were invited to bring the best of their industries and crafts. During this time period, uh, there was no term as industrial design. And uh, in this great exhibition, there were many products like the machine and um, which were made uh, with machine, um, but they mimicked the hand made a uh, clock like this handmade uh, this is machine made clock but it mimicked uh, the handmade clock and then this uh, saving machine which had so many uh, features which uh, were not related to the function of the saving machine uh, this uh, type of these type of designs at uh, the Great Palace uh, received a backlash from uh, design influencers and educators like John Ruskin and his pupil um, William Morris, who started an art and craft movement. And the art and craft movement, um, um, he they stated the contents of the palace as wonderfully ugly, and um, they thought that. Uh, the objects that were presented were unworthy of consideration as an aesthetic object, not because of its design, but because of its deceit. It pretended to be handmade and the entire object was a lie. Uh, Ruskin stated, all cast from the machine is bad as work is dishonest. And moving on to the 1886, this is the writing desk, which is considered as the first fully realized piece of arts and craft furniture. It exhibits an honest use of materials, worked simply minimal decoration and a transparent finish that does not hide the oak from which it was made. Moving on, um, this is Michael Thonet. Um, he is a, a German cabinet maker and he wanted to, um, he learned the ways to uh, bend a wood uh, and then he wanted to produce a chair which is cheap and which can be mass produced and which which can look good um, so he created this number 14 chair which is a very famous chair it's still used now it um, it can be deconstructed and reconstructed um, with like a simple to uh, arrange mechanism um, it was the first piece of furniture designed to be shipped in different parts uh, to save space during transportation and came with simple instructions to put it together. Then came the first modernist. He is Christopher Dresser, and he's the first person to uh, incorporate the human aspect into a design. He made quick sketches of the port, and um, this is an, a very early consideration of human factors in the design of the products form in an era not known for such design. For better comfort and safety, his new designs located um, 
T ports handle directly above the center of gravity during the act of pouring and put less emphasis on how the T port looked. The next section uh, it will be talked by um, Chami. Okay, coming to graphics in 1850, uh, a bookman typeface, which is famous now, was called Old Style Antique and it was published by well known designers. It got so famous that it had had its own versions by several foundries and it was renamed as Bookman Typeface later on. Okay, coming on to graphic, early advertising of the West 1867 to 1918. The early advertising of the West collection includes over 450 print advertisements that were run from 1867 to 1918 in regional periodicals city dictionaries and theoretical brochures to assist academics and students in examining social and cultural and economic changes throughout this time these commercials were chosen and digitalized the collection is divided into topical sections and includes advertisements from commodities for personal care hygiene alcohol tobacco equipment manufacturing transportation clothing you name it Coming to Victorian typography, the Victorian era's growing preference for rich detail had a significant impact on typeface and lettering design. Letterforms with conventional structure served as the foundation for early 19th century developed typefaces. The traditional letter form was kept, but embellishments like shadows, outlines, and decorations were added. First Rotary Press. The first mass media were created thanks to Richard Hoare's sophisticated printing technique. In 1875, labels and packaging were highly influenced on a chromolithographic process. Okay, coming to wood type posters in 1876, the compositor employed larger letter forms for the first letter of the significant words to be bolder than bold. It was highly influenced typography style. In 1880, Western nations had a propensity to treat youngsters as little adults prior to the Victorian era. Toy books, vibrant picture books for younger children were made during the Victorian era to reflect the Victorians' more sentimental mindset. Coming on to a brief history of American advertising. This is from the end of Civil War to the beginning of World War I. So the Civil War had really impacted the production of advertisement in this era. The American advertising sector had grown to promote a plethora of goods and services since adverts were first appeared in colonial newspapers in early 18th century. Victorian advertisements. The Victorian era is known for its love for intricate details, which had an impact on commercial art, furniture, fashion, architecture, and interior design. The Victorian era fascinated uh, was fascinated with antiques and had significant impact on the fashion as well. 1883. Editorial and advertising design. Most publishing houses in America and Europe, notably Harper and Brothers, did not give creative book design much thought for the majority of 19th century. Publishers prioritized big print running over affordable cost as a result for the reading public's rapid growth and economics brought about a new technology. Workplace page layouts were used to create modern style fonts, which were frequently inferior adaptions of adaptations of Badoni and Didot designs. Monotype typesetting machine in 1887. Talbot Lanston created the monotype machine, which was used as a heated metal to cast single characters. Nonetheless, it took 10 years for before the monotype was productive enough to be put in production. Learning was doable in, with monotype, unlike the linotype process. Kodak Camera. The launch of Kodak Camera 1 in 1888 was by far the most important development in the history of amateur photography. The Kodak was a straightforward box camera that came equipped with a thousand exposure roll of the film. It was created and marketed by Rochester, New York native George Eastman, a former bank clerk. The complete machine was shipped back to the plant in Rochester, once the roll was finished, where it was reloaded and delivered back to the customer while the first roll was being processed. All the roll film and tiny fixed focus cameras were developed in order to make the codec visible. 
He made photography accessible to millions of casual amateurs without any specific professional training, technical expertise, or aesthetic credentials by simplifying the equipment and even processing the film for the consumer. You press the button, we do the rest. It was you press the button, we do the rest was a catchy slogan created by Eastman to highlight how simple the codex system was to use. Coming to pictorial modernism in 1894, the brief career of the beggar stuff is one of the most notable episodes in the history of graphic design. William Nicholson and James Pratt was two British, two British artists who were inseparable since art school, were brothers-in-law. They were well-known academic print painters who made the decision to start an advertisement design business in 1894. To protect their artistic re reputation, they believed it was necessary to use pseudonyms. Thank you.